As the title and thumbnail suggests, I have actually just paid £350 for these brackets for an upgrade on my Volkswagen Transporter. In this video, I am going to show you guys exactly where these go and what they're for. And, well, now that I've got them in my hand, have I been done? This beautiful work of art is a light bar bracket from a little Swiss company called Hess. Now I know that this upgrade is only going to appeal to a small portion of the transporter world and I get that, but I need your help. Do not leave yet because I have a few little things that I need advice, almost like a poll. Go to the chapters below. I think I'll call the chapter something like need your help or decision time. When I fit the light bar, the light bar has lots of different options and I can choose whenever I want that light bar to come on with whatever option. So I'm gonna run through loads of options, whether or not you would or would not fit a light bar to your own van, please feel free to stay and watch and follow my journey, but please find the chapters below and drop it in the comments if you was to put a light bar on your van, what selections would you make? Thank you, let's take it away. Let's take a closer look, so here it is. It has Hess laser cut out of the bracket part there. So what happens is when you apply that to your vehicle, hopefully you guys can see, the color of the vehicle actually grins through the back of it and spells out Hess. And these two are fixing points. These are 350 pounds. I used all of last month's social media money. I added 349 pound to it and I actually bought these. So I was willing to pay 350 pound for two brackets that sit there, why? There are cheaper versions all over the internet, but I'm about to drill my A-pillar. You only get one of them. Well, you get one each side, but what I mean is, it's not like fitting an upgrade to your grill where you know, worst case scenario, you'll just buy another grill. This is a very important part of your vehicle, and I don't really feel like I should fit a 79 pound light bar bracket, which might corrode itself away in a couple of years it's also exactly where you're going to see it it's in your eye line it's it's literally the first thing you will see i think this can be quality i think this needs to be quality that is going to stay there you can't remove this i wouldn't want to swap it that's why i paid 350 pound for them don't judge me. This is a little bit of a tricky upgrade, not because it's hard to do, but because I have to span a light bar right the way across there, sort out the differences exactly, make sure that it's square, level, in the right place, the same distance from the pillar each side. So I'm going to lay this on a carpet, fit the light bar brackets to it, fit the light bar, make it one complete unit because every single light bar, whether or not it's 50 inch curved, 50 inch straight, they are slightly different and brackets can be different. So there is no set measurement for an application like this. I am gonna go ahead and say that preferably this is a two man job, just this bit at least. Such a confusion of angles. And what's stopping that? It's also left to right, which is, but guess what? I haven't got a pen, I haven't got a pen. I've been messing around with making it look right for so long now. Uh, I'm just gonna go for it basically. I don't care anymore. No, I'm only joking. But I have come to the conclusion where I want my brackets sit so they sit the nicest. Worst case scenario, I can put some little shims in between my bracket and the light bar. As long as my light bar isn't too long, I can make up the difference. For now, it might just be washers. In the future, I might get some little black shims made up, whatever. I'm more concerned that these sit nice and that they have the same margin, this side and that side, and they're parallel with the pillar. I'm more concerned about this and I'll just make the light bar fit afterwards. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. I am going to start with a step drill. Now, this is too long to get to the size hole that I need, which is 9.5. It'll actually end up hitting the internal skin. But always start with one of these in such an important place like that because these don't skid so much. So that is not going to move when I start the hole. We hope. Come with me and you'll be in a world Hopefully you can see, but they are lined up lovely. That's lovely and parallel. Let's go for it. 
So now that's started and that can't move around and do anything silly, I'm gonna come through with a 9.5. And that's gonna leave some pretty horrible edges. So I use one of these. I believe they're called like a rosebud. That cleans that edge up lovely and also gives somewhere for our paint product to go. We want this to last forever without corroding our A pillar because you don't get another one of them apart from the other one of them. So I am gonna use some primer first. I'm just gonna spray some primer into a little pot. I'll go make myself a brew, come back, and then I'm going to treat that with some hammerite. And now, just because it'll help me sleep at night, I'm also gonna put a very thin bead of sicker around that hole that when we close our riv nut down that's gonna be lovely go slow and steady with the hand pump riv nut don't want to try and do too much at once but that's pulling that in absolutely spot on chuffed with that so these riv nuts um are actually supplied in a separate bag by volkswagen t5 upgrades i can only assume that they've decided to supply their own. They might be a little bit softer, a little bit more user friendly. That is my guess because four do come in the packet with the rest of the fixtures and fittings, but extra ones are supplied. Now what I'm gonna do is just clean up that edge and with that sicker in there and the paint behind it, that will never ever be affected by the weather. In our little bag of fixtures and fittings that come with the brackets, you get these lovely little dome head fixtures. I'll follow up and lock tight everything. That there is one bracket fitted. Gorgeous. Moment of truth, guys. Here we go. Doesn't help that every single time I pop this top open, pop the top, it looks like it's gonna tip down the rain. So we fit an absolute treat. Are we pointing too high? So with the light bar mounted, next thing to do is wire it up. Now, this is an Augs beam light bar. It has many, many settings. Can't wait to show you them. But it comes with a harness DIY ready to go. Easy peasy, positive and negative to your battery has a wire that goes off, red, yellow, black, very simple, that's exactly the same colours at the other end, that goes to your light bar, and then on the other end, it has this little fella, it has an on, off, and the mode. Now, I am going to leave this buried in the bulkhead area of the van. I don't want this as my main control. I have hijacked the yellow wire. I've hijacked that, that is the trigger wire. Whenever you send a little bit of power down that wire, the relay then allows true power from your battery to pass through that and go to your light bar. Never wire a light bar into any of your original lights. What you can do is take a little trigger wire. It doesn't matter what you take it off. You could take that off of a horn, an indicator, whatever you choose, that is low voltage. All that does is allow power to pass through that relay. That's how a relay works, very, very simple. Deep in the depths behind here, behind the battery, there's a little plate. All you need to do is lift this panel up and that will reveal two torque screws. You remove that plate and you now have access to the bulkhead. In that bulkhead already is a little pass-through with a grommet in it. All I'm gonna do is make use of that. This is the little panel that I've removed. What I've done is I've actually put a gland on there because this is actually fairly waterproof. It has a rubber seal, it fits in there and it stops water, I believe, hitting your bulkhead and rotting it out. So, instead of just drilling a hole in it and negating its true purpose, what I've done is used a little grommet. So I will, or a gland should I say, installing that little switch with the on off and the mode, you would also want that to pass through into your cab area, but not me. Let's just get the engine bay pieced back together the best I can. I've got to do a school run in a minute. This, my lovely friends, is a scan strut, and this is now the only way 
I want to take a wire from outside of the van to inside of the van. I don't care if it's vertical, horizontal, this is absolutely lovely. This rubber gasket is also your template. You lay that where you want. This faces the front, so the wire always faces the back, otherwise you might get driving rain. So this is your template, 25 mil hole, followed by four pilot holes. Very, very simple. You drill them, protect them from weather with our paint and all that kind of thing. Stick that to the vehicle. And then this goes over the top. Now what it does, because the wire channels through there, and forces it out in one place, it means that wire can never touch the edge of that metal. The old plastic ones that we were using before, you're always really concerned that it's actually leaning up against the metal and then chafing and then finally breaking. But this, look how pretty the end product is. Now, if you are using these for solar wires and you want to keep the factory fitted MC4 on the top, what you would do is feed the wire all the way through, including the grommet, feed it through, feed it through. You can't feed it over such a thing as like an mc4 that kind of thing so just make sure you don't go too far ahead of yourself because you just have to dismantle it and sort it out after the case but once that's on like i say you get all these different size grommets there for your different size wire honestly absolutely fantastic bit of kit let's get it fitted now on a transporter usually that would be totally hollow but what i've done is you're not going to be able to see in there but i've had to peel the headliner down just a bit just remove the handle remove the little bit of trim on the pop top because there's strengthening plates in there which a standard t6 would not have but i had to make sure that i wasn't just going to drill through and hit part of the pop top structural section here so that leaves me about here so like i said i've drawn over my template there and then this wire i'll probably put the joint here what's quite good about this is this is in the zone of the pop top when this closes down it's never actually even going to be tested by water it's in a sealed place that's in a bit of a cavity there absolutely love it just on cue back from walking the dog and it's tipped down with rain excellent here is the scan struck guys there is no other way that you should be bringing a cable through your van anymore i'm saying 25 mil hole in the middle four 2.5s as per the template protect the paint stick down the foam washer screw it down don't even need to use a battery drill if you're using a 2.5 mil drill bit absolutely awesome the wire that passes through the plastic cannot rub the edge of that 25 mil hole it's it's it lines up perfectly it's absolutely cracking and then choose the correct size grommet per the size of the wire so this one here is tight enough to get on so i know by the time that's clamped down that's going to seal it up good and then we get a piece of plastic like this get it the correct way around we feed it through the back like that and then you can see it come together that pushes on at that angle there you push the bottom in pull the top over and then when you screw that down with the screw that's supplied watch this that is waterproof and tight going nowhere and let's have it right it looks absolutely wicked for the moment for this video to get it out tonight i am basically just going to join them together in a crude fashion but do you know what because it's under the pop top it doesn't even matter see you in a sec so this is genuinely temporary guys i don't just say something's temporary to avoid the onslaught where people say i haven't done something professionally if you hit the subscribe button hit the bell like and comment you'll see in the upcoming weeks this light bar does need to come back off it's not just to excuse something poor like this i promise i'll probably be doing that next upgrade long before i pop the top again so as long as i tuck them out of the way they'll be absolutely golden so now we are going to insert our fuse in the fuse holder it is decision time. Time for you guys to have your say. This Augs Beam Light Bar has six settings, six different sequences. I can bring on the power to that light bar with any of the controls in my van. I just have to choose. So there's a flashy orange light, for example. So if I wanted hazard lights, a bit like highway maintenance, every time I hit my hazards, that would bring on loads of flashy, dancy lights. I can choose, and I think I am stuck between having 
main beam in addition to my main beam and my lasers or do I want to run a DRL? In addition to the LED DRL that is in my main headlight, do I want one of the chosen sequences on the light to be in addition to that? It's very garish, it's very look at me, but with what's coming up, that won't be too out of place. So here we are. At the moment, I'm using the factory supplied little unit here to bring it on. That is just the standard main beam. I'm gonna talk you through them and I'm gonna start from number one. So. Your answers are gonna sound a little bit like this. I would have number three and I would bring them on with my horn, for example. So here we go. Here's number one and that is like a main beam. Here's number two, which I like. I think I want this as my DRL. That is just an amber. We have an amber and a bit of clear light. That's number three. Number four is real tricky. Number five is amber tricky. And number six is a bit of both. Let me run you through them again in a bit of a close up. So we have number one. Do remember that it is daytime, so these will be a bit brighter, but this is number one. Number two. Number three. That'd be quite cool as a bit of a DRL. Number four. Good for highway maintenance, I guess. Or campsite fun. Number five. Number six. Put in your comments, guys. What number? with what button of the van. I've been looking at that light bar and my eyes have gone all funny. I literally cannot see a thing. I've got spots in my eyes and all that. So, so what do you think guys? 350 pound for these brackets. Is that insane? I mean, they are gorgeous. They are in your eye line. It is a brand, it is recognizable. I need that to last. At the end of the day, you're drilling your A-pillar once again. So this needs to be long lasting and look good for a very long time. So I did balance it out with a cheaper light bar. That light bar is actually an old version because they do not currently make a 50 inch curved in their newer stuff. That goes for about 175 pound. Now you can spend up to seven, eight, 900 pound on a light bar. So yes, the brackets are expensive, but I bought the overall cost back down with an Augs beam light bar. So I'm into that for about 525 pounds. So that isn't the end of the world. And that scan strut, they are $19.99 of anything. If you can take anything away from this video, hit the link below. They do doubles, singles. All I say about that is I fitted a double the other day for solar, which is absolutely awesome. If you're using a double, you can't put two big holes through a double. Use two singles. So just double check the cable size that will be allowed for each one of those scan struts. The singles will allow you to go to like a 10 mil cable, I believe. Whereas the double, I think it tops out at about seven mil, but here we are. I'm absolutely chuffed to nuts with it. I think it looks mental. Is this too extreme? What do you think?